Hey guys, welcome back to Combat Corner. My name is Jackson. My name is Kobe. Um, and today we are breaking down the UFC fight night uh, that happened in Texas yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Austin. Austin. Austin, Texas. Uh, Benil Darius versus our man. Our man. Rukian. Correct. <clears throat> um, and all the other fights that happened on that card, which were just as exciting, um, mm-hmm. if not some more exciting parts of it that we'll that we'll get into shortly yeah honestly but, um, there was some drama some horribleness some horribleness for horribleness. sure there was um, some impressive performances some real uh, like groundbreaking performances some history some history um a lot of stuff know, some some record breaking stuff um the drink of the day being a monday you'll see this on a tuesday but is our non-alcoholic segment we've gone for lucas aid it is pretty awesome uh although it's got an insane amount of sugar in it Kobe's been campaigning for this uh, one for a wee while now. We'll see. Honestly, have you ever had one of these before? Uh, yeah, a, a long time ago though. But um, we'll crack into these in a second, eh? Let's do it. Should Let's we go? crack into the episode? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Combat Corner. Ah. It's a oh. race. Oh, there's it no. a bit of a spinny one. Yeah. It just keeps spinning. We've gone for Lucasaid Energy Orange Flavor, powered by Glucose, with 1140 kilojoules of energy. It's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy. 13% of your daily intake of energy. It's also got <clears throat> 69. No, 66.9 grams of carbs, 53.6 grams of sugar, which is fucked. Um, yeah, but we're going to drink it nonetheless because it is delicious. This stuff, as soon as I sipped into that, took me right back to my childhood. It will make really your did. piss burn. It will make your piss think. And it actually does, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah. No, I probably won't. Out. <laughs> it probably, it's probably not going to do that, but it could. Yeah. You never know. Um, what are your initial thoughts on that then? On that drink? Yeah. That's nice. It's good. Uh, it's very zesty. It's quite tangy. Quite tangy. Orangey. Mm. Luco. Yeah. Luco. Very, um, it's in your face, you know? It doesn't hold back. It definitely doesn't hold back. Um, it doesn't. So, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. First of all, we'll mention stuff. it was uh crate day over the weekend. As soon as we finished recording the last episode. Uh, we got straight into crate day. Another thing you might notice, the beer that is now top of the list isn't actually up there because it didn't really have its own bottle. And it would be, I thought it was, you know, quite confusing. Once the Philip Brothers Brewing Company does release their own bottles, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to have one up on the wall. I'm sure we'll just we'll have a case of it somewhere. Yeah, just we will. Like we've got these guys here. We'll have it somewhere within the shop. Um, but that day has not happened yet, so it's not up there. Um, but yeah, crate day, Jackson. We could be how, hunting at something, you, yeah. Yeah, uh, we could. Mr. Phillips, but... Mr. P. Mr. P. Um, what was that? What was how, how was... Yeah, crate day. We finished up the episode, obviously getting straight into crate day. It was, it was, it was a big a, night, big day. It was a lovely occasion filled with uh, joyous, joyous moments with friends and, um, and family. It was. Crate day. Which day is what it was always intended to be. Yeah, it was. You Jackson know? cooked up a pork belly. Oh, and Did I didn't I even get any of it, but it it looked delicious. It, it was delicious. Delicious. Yeah, it was all of the above. It was. I can sure. tell you that. Yep. How much did that thing weigh? Um, I think it was just shy of a kilo. And how much do you pay for that? Twenty dollars. Nineteen dollars because it was reduced to clear. It's actually pretty good. By the maddest butcher himself. Shout out to the mad butcher. He um, that's our first sponsor for the video. Actually, mad butcher. Thank you very much for everything. You want some great deals, especially on the crate day day? Go to the Mad. Go see B. Mad. Mad B. Madison Butcher. Mm. <laughs> Madison Butcher. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great day. Uh, crate day, great day. We had fun. A lot of alcohol was consumed uh, by everyone involved. Uh, the neighbors got a little bit pissed off every now and then. <laughs> you remember that's, that? This yeah, it's got to yeah, be done. It's got to be done. But there were some words exchanged. There were. We didn't get too too mean. Well, I didn't. 
I didn't either. Neither. I remember yeah. someone did. Someone did. Either but... way, what everyone's really here to hear about, Kobe. Probably the fights, isn't um, it? Yeah, probably what Why happened you... yesterday. Yeah. Come on, man. In regards with uh, with Benil Dariush getting slept for the Benny second D. time in a row. Was it, it the first round against Charles as well? It was, yeah. Yeah, like late, later in good. the first round. And it wasn't as clean um, of a KO, but obviously he got KO'd. Clean. Pretty bad. Clean. It wasn't as clean, you know. Oh, well, Sarukian's KO was pretty clean. It was pretty clean. It was pretty pretty damn clean, honestly. Um, we'll start there, right? We'll start there. So Let's. Yeah. Benil Dariush, first round KO loss to uh, Armin Sarukian. He's looking like a real world beater, honestly. Like he, he looks like he could be the next the next contender for the belt. Uh if not, maybe one more fight. Obviously, Islam is likely to be booked later this year against Charles. So really depends if he wants to be active. Because he can be. You know, he's he took no damage in that fight. Yeah. Yeah. He, he could walk into another fight right now. Yeah, he can. Um that's that's a very exciting prospect, like you say. Mm-hmm. Um there was some chat from uh, some of the press to Dana in the in the post fight um, press conference where where they said, "Do you think now this does mix up who is the next next in line for the belt?" Because obviously we we did think it was Charles before. Um, we've seen this happen in previous times where the likes of um, Drikus Dupli, uh, Duplessis was going to be <laughs> overlooked for that. Uh, I'll leave that. I'll leave that. Duplessis. Uh, whatever you want. Uh, to play. You, uh, yeah. You got CTE. Yeah, I have a G. little bit. Um, <laughs> it's Dupli. I've got CTE. But either way, what what I'm saying is, is it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen someone jump over who we all thought was, was in line for the belt mm. off an impressive performance like that. <clears throat> yeah, no, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, obviously, yeah, Drickus got injured. Um, if Charles is to get injured again, it definitely will happen, right? It's got to happen. He is now the clear number one contender outside of Charles. Well, I mean, that's why Charles got the shot at the belt was because he knocked out Benil Dariush in the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to go by that, Sarukin, uh, Sarukian did it more impressively. I'm having a, <laughs> having a bad terrible day, day with the names. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I think, like you say, yeah, he did look like a world beater out there. Like we did brush over quickly on uh, Saturday's episode. Um, it was the first time that he has managed to step up under, under the under the bright lights and and perform on a on a big stage. Yeah, um, against the top, top against guy. the top top guy. Because yeah, the rest of his his wins they weren't. I'm not saying they weren't against solid competition, but they weren't one of those big names. Um, yeah. So it was good to to see him go in there and and get the dub because neither mm. of us expected him to. No, we we both put. Um... We both thought that Benny would be coming back with a bit of a fire under his belly, and maybe that was the case. But he got he got clipped pretty damn bad in that first round. And in all honesty, it's not looking good for Benny going forward. His chin is kind of showing to be a little bit suspect. Like, mm. I mean, don't make, get me wrong; it was a really good hit, but like he went out straight away, and like his foot wasn't even planted. Obviously, he generated a lot of power. Charles has a lot of power. Obviously, Sarukian has a lot of power, which is great. And it's good for knocking people out, obviously. But mm. it's not looking good for um, Benny. Two round, two first round um, finishes by, by knockout. His chin has got to be up there with a, you know, as a suspect chin. No? Suspect chin. No. He's got a suspect chin. It's on the suspect list. Yeah. For, I know, mean, anyone who wants to hit it. That's right. Yeah. Like you say, I mean, a lot of people would. Uh... Normally, kind of a first round knockout like that, you kind of brush it off and say, "Well, the guy hadn't quite warmed up and got into the fight yet." And that is that is a common thing. Like someone will go in there, they're not kind of warmed up properly, and next thing that they know, they're waking up off the off the canvas floor. Not because they didn't prepare properly, but because they couldn't get into the moment properly. Yep. But when you do it twice in a row, yeah, I'm agreeing with you. It's um, it doesn't look good. No, it definitely definitely doesn't look good, unfortunately. It um it seems like yeah, Benny has seen the best his best days. And oh maybe not, you know, maybe not. He could come back and mount another title challenge, but it's really becoming harder and harder for him now. And it's a shame we didn't get to see him challenging for the belt because he did deserve it like big time before that Charles loss, obviously. Yeah. He was the guy and they never booked him. That's and, right. You know. He made it all the way to the top of the mountain, but yeah, he could he just couldn't quite Get to the summit. Yeah, it was um, a shame. 
it was an impressive run but mm. yeah now i think it's like yeah it feels like it's over it, 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 it does like feel it's like over. it's over it would it would be nice to see him walk in there and and get things started again but he obviously hasn't been booked against the right people to do that lately yeah yeah and i mean surikin's a lot younger a lot more athletic than than he is mm. but yeah it's tough there's a lot of guys like that you know there's a lot of guys like that in in the lightweight division especially so yeah i mean yeah i would hate to see him go up against like a, a justin gaethje yeah charles, uh, charles he's already been up against charles sorry i That's just had to right. sure that it wasn't work it's all good and it wasn't <clears throat> just to let you know jackson is on call all the that time means he can be called on to the work that he needs to do so, to milk some squids to milk some squids um but yeah again sarukian extremely impressive like he looks like he he could potentially beat islam i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna say he's going to i'm not gonna say he's a, he's the favorite going in there but like he has the the, the skill set it seems like to really pose some really big issues towards um islam he does and not not many other guys in the division seem like they have that skill set but he does obviously he's got the counter wrestling the wrestling the uh we don't really know too much about his jiu-jitsu but his his grappling in general is pretty good mm. um obviously he's got the punching power the striking ability there was a superman punch like that was that was yeah basically a superman punch and he landed it and straight out so perfect right on the jaw yeah um <laughs> i think he deserves a title shot next but who do you think he will or should, yeah. I think he should fight Gaethje. Yeah, so do I. Just because, like I was saying before, this was his first win on a big occasion. And I think if he's going to go fight for the for the belt, he wants to be well prepped in those big occasions. Yep. A, a slot on a pay-per-view card, um, against Gaethje, you're going to go maybe second. We come in. Yeah. Um, second on, like, it, there's... Most likely going to be a. a There's title. not many bigger stars than no, Gaethje. In no, the, that's right. Picture. So, <clears throat> I think I think Gaethje is is a good fight for him, and and I only say that because if he does fight Islam and say by like good for him, say he does win, he's going to be fighting Gaethje next anyway. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, or a couple fights down the <clears throat> line. Um, saying that. So, and Gaethje's another one of those guys that's like right there, but maybe he doesn't quite deserve the shot yet. So put them two together. They are the two people who are like right there, right there, like yeah. so close to being able to um, claim that they deserve it. Let them fight, and then we see who actually deserves it. You know that 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 gives us a clear number one contender and a, and a clear path forward as Charles and Islam fight. Um, honestly, super impressive. I'm really impressed by that guy. Yeah, I think he's going to do do bits in the lightweight division for a long time. He's only 27, like we said. Um, so yeah. Pretty pretty damn impressive that he did do it against the top opponent on the night under the bright lights and he knocked him out. It wasn't just a decision or anything. It wasn't close at all. So yeah, he's he's really proven that he's there <clears throat> um and he's he's there to stay. Mm. Anything more on that fight? That you, no, you I think we've babbled on long enough. Yeah, it was a pretty short event. fight. It was it a very short fight. fight. We have talked probably for I'd say maybe five times as long as the fight lasted. Well, we've been talking for 13 minutes. A little while of that was the intro. Maybe the first four minutes we weren't talking about it. We've been talking 10 minutes, and it was like a one-minute fight. Was it one minute? Was it the first minute? I think it was. Let's let's have a look, because if it was, then that's... We will confirm whether mad. or not it was a first-minute win. I always type up the UFC, and the it like clicks to the, rant, or the ranking straight away. Uh, we'll, we'll chuck it on the screen, eh? So One minute and... Four seconds. One minute, four seconds. So, <clears throat> I mean, if it was under a minute, I'd say, yeah, title shot, but couldn't quite do the minute mark, so. Yeah, those four seconds are a real killer. It's a big, it's a big deal. And he just couldn't do it, you know? Mm. He just couldn't get it done. But, you know, maybe next time, Edmund. Amen. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm thinking of another guy. Edmund. Yeah? Yeah. No way. Jalen Turner looked uh, pretty solid out there tonight. Uh, last Turner night. Jalen Turner looked... Really good, man. He looked like a world beater as well. Like <clears throat> clean striking, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. there wasn't too much else apart from nothing. No. no, there wasn't. Um, he, he had some very clean kicks. He did. Um, he up the middle with so good. Yeah, I think in that fight, it was very clear right from the get go that Bobby Green was not managing the distance very well. 
Um, and I don't think you can really blame that on the height of Jalen Turner because he was preparing for a guy in Dan Hooker who was 6'1 already, I think. Uh, it's pretty big, yeah. Six foot or six one, <clears throat> six. I believe. Jalen Turner being two inches taller at six three. Either way, they're both a lot taller than Bobby Green. So mm. I think what his preparation with that was that little um kind of sidekick to the leg. Um he used that quite a few times to kind of manage the distance and, and kind of come in and out. But yeah, he his 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 hands down by his side kind of thing that he that he's always done just made him very vulnerable to to Jalen Turner just taking one step in and being right yeah. within range, <clears throat> yeah. um and pretty much landing every time that they exchanged. Which mm. the jab was on point. That one two. That so one two. It was well. yeah, yeah. But it's almost like looking back at it now, Bobby didn't really have a chance. No, like he really didn't. He didn't like there was there was at no point in that fight. Just the two minutes that it lasted that you were like, okay, Bobby's looking pretty good here. Like, he could knock him out. It just didn't look like he was going to. No. Like, it just looked. Um, Turner just simply looked better, and he also had the um, the the height and the speed and the strength advantage, yeah. which is like, like how, you know, it's a big, big mountain to climb. Excuse the pun. Um, for Bobby Green. <clears throat> Turner, though, like, he, he now goes on, and he could be pushing maybe a top five guy yeah it's uh it's tricky isn't it i mean mm. technically coming off a loss to dan hooker before this fight um whether or not you know like that that's that's kind of a a gaichi chandler situation that last fight um and the fact that both of them are considered like dan hooker's obvi- obviously got the win on his record but like we've said time and time again close. that fight really could have gone either way <clears throat> um and he obviously broke Dan's arm. Yeah, in a big way. Yeah, um, yeah. What's so? I, I'd like to see Jalen Turner. I don't know about someone in the top five, but definitely the top ten. Yeah, um, maybe like a seven, six, seven ranking. Yeah. Do we have a? Should we have a peek? Let's have a look. Should we have a peek at the UFC rankings. So in the lightweight division, <clears throat> Sean O'Malley, Jalen Turner versus Sean O'Malley. Yeah, do you reckon? Um, who have we got around six? <laughs> I'm just ignoring uh, you from now on. <laughs> Gamrot, yeah, he's out. He's out of the question. Uh, Gamrot, he's already fought Gamrot and he lost. Uh, a lot yours. of people thought he won that fight. Do you remember that fight? No, I don't think I've seen that fight. It was that would be yeah, super close. I should watch that back. It was honestly, I thought, <clears throat> I thought that Turner won that fight. He had the better of him in the striking, like big time. Mm. He was beating him up on the feet, but um. As as Gamrot usually does, he was clinching. He got a few takedowns, but he didn't really do much on the ground. And he got gifted the not gifted, but he got awarded the um, I think it was twenty nine twenty eight split decision. I think so. Super close. You could run that back. I'm gonna say uh, actually, why not? Benil Dariush, Jalen hey. Turner. Okay, yeah, that's actually a good shout. Um. That's a really good shout. Yeah, because he'll be he'll be dropping a decent way down the rank. I'd say he'll be loss. sitting in there at probably six or seven after. Yeah, <clears throat> Arben jumps to five uh, to four, and Benny yeah probably drops below below Chandler and probably Gamrot as well. I Did think he... Arben could even jump to three. Yeah, honestly, above because above Dustin, ab- above DP. Yeah, DP obviously coming off that he kicked loss recently mm. to Justin Gaethje, so. I mean, people people rate you off your last fight, off your they last do. performance. So and there's a lot of recency bias in the UFC. Yeah, it definitely. It's a really big thing. Yeah, um, it's pretty crazy. Which is why we were just having the discussion about the possibility of Saruki and jumping Charles for the yeah yeah for the strap. But yeah, hundred percent. Either way, um, yeah, I think Jalen Turner versus Benil Dariush that answers a lot of questions. Um, no, yeah, yeah, for that, sure. That that shows us whether or not he he is polished enough to be to be in there with. Uh, with those top guys, because like you said against Dan Hooker, he does have the skills to beat Dan Hooker. He just chose to to go in there and, and try and have a war, have a war with Dan yeah. Hooker. Yeah, he um, could have beaten Hooker which for sure. I will commend I will commend anyone for for going in yeah. there and trying to have a war with Dan Hooker. <clears throat> yeah, but I think he's a bit of a magnet. Like you go in there and you're magnetized towards a war. Yeah, like, he he's, just, he's just got that, he's got a, like, a, an energy where he kind of makes you want to fight him. I yeah, think. Um, and he, but he's good enough to like. 
to get you there with skill mm. and then he drags you slowly into the war and then he's like yeah yeah dog yeah 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 and then once the war's begun he's he's at home mm. so yeah Jalen Turner against um against Benny give it a bit of time maybe we don't want to see Benny or rush back in there oh no no I'd, I'm not talking next week um maybe later in the year I mean if if Jalen wants to turn around quickly and fight someone it was pretty good uh, thanks. Did mate. you mean to do that? No, I didn't. I, <laughs> I had to think about what I'd said for a oh, second there. That was good. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's there's too many other guys that would be further up the order that would make sense Who's for him focusing to fight. on guys? Sorry? Who's focusing on guys? Me. Yeah, there's always too many other guys. Like, what? I don't know. What well, we do? It's a bit sus, sp- Well, should we? I mean, if we're going to spend... There's in the UFC as well. There is. Jackson. Do you want to spend... How much time do you want to spend talking about that? Was there? <laughs> no, no, no. Do we okay. have any women's right. fights in no. our notes? I don't think so. <laughs> no, we don't. But you wrote the notes, mate, <laughs> and it's all about guys. I put, look, I put boob down. Yeah, boob versus Turner. I I don't know why I put boob instead of Bobby, but mm. I just thought it'd be funny. Not really. Right. Um. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Who do we want to see uh, Bobby Green against next? Do we want to see him ever fight again? I'd love to see him fight again. He's a great guy. Great guy. Um, he could fight the winner of... Nah, because if Ferguson beats Paddy, you don't want to see him... You don't want to see Ferguson versus Bobby again, right? No. I was going to say you could have him fight the winner of that fight, but... Probably yeah. Green versus Paddy Pimblett either way. Would be pretty fun. That'd be fun. Mm, that would be a and fun And I mean, fight. they've been talking smack, I believe. Yeah. No, yeah, they have. <clears throat> um, Definitely not like a uh, a Benoit Saint Denis. That's a scary matchup for anyone involved. Yeah. And coming off a terrible knockout like that, you don't want to see him up against someone like this. There's always like RDA. RDA would be maybe a good fight. Have they fought before? I don't think so. No, I don't think um, Bobby and RDA have ever fought before. Hmm. Um, and if it if they had, it would have been a very long time ago. Yeah, so, I'd you know, like to see that actually. They're both fun, at, eh? at similar points in their career. Mm. Um, Bobby has shown us recently against Tony Ferguson that he has jujitsu. Yeah, um, and he's been that. he has been talking about how he has been working on that. Mm. Um, mm. RDA has been kind of up and down the last couple of years with his results. Yeah, having having a few uh, decent fights. Like I remember recently, he just pieced up Moicano. Uh, maybe that was about eighteen months ago. Yeah, now, yeah, but yeah, um. Yeah. <clears throat> Even still, yeah, like that was class. That, that was, was that class. Was class. And, and Moicano's a, a lot younger than him. Um, I think I he did. He did step in late, but that's still like, yeah, you like say a younger, fresh guy, absolutely piecing him up, and your yeah. your mid to late thirties is pretty impressive. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think RDA Bobby Green. Yeah, let's do RDA Bobby Green. Make it a fight a uh, fight night headliner. Five five round fight. That would be a fun fight. Definitely. Let's get it booked. Mm. Uh, or even Mike Moicano. I believe Moicano will probably be. Oh no, I think Moicano will probably want to fight sooner than. I don't know. Uh, th- th- there's something we do need to discuss here, and it's um kind of like, <clears throat> it's pretty glaring. Yeah, there was a there was a terrible moment on that fight card. Yeah, and, it, and I it think was around Bobby Green. I think we did well there because the real the real point of props that should be made after that fight was Jalen Turner's performance. Definitely. But what it's been completely overshadowed by in the media since this fight is the stoppage mm-hmm. and how it took the referee, I think, between 10 and 13 seconds to stop the fight once Bobby Green was first knocked down. Um, and you could almost say knocked out yeah. by knocked down. Like, yeah. it, it looked kind of like a knockdown. You couldn't quite tell if he went out, but he kind of face-planted. And that's not a good sign. No, if you're falling on your face, typically I would like, yeah. Maybe if you fall on your face... you. You don't want to keep fighting. No. And if you're maybe kind of out cold, you, you probably shouldn't keep fighting. No. Like, it, it seemed like he got knocked out. We were just talking about this just before we started recording. He, it looked like he got knocked out, fell down, kind of woke up, and then uh, Turner proceeded to beat his head into the ground, knocked him out again. Then he kind of woke up again and started, like, flopping around a little bit, trying to get out. And then he got knocked out for a third time or a fourth time. Meanwhile, the ref was standing right beside yeah. the action. He was right there. Watching it happen. Just having a yeah. moment, I guess. Yeah, but, just thinking about what, what do I need to get later from the shop? 
I swear it was mints. Was it mints? This has been going on about oh, something. Oh, did that I she need want mints or was it mints that I forgot yesterday? What did I forget? Oh, God. No, oh shit, milk. there's a fight. Oh, yeah. my God. Stop oh, that. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit, that's my job. Oh, there's a dent in the side of Bobby's head. <laughs> Bobby's head is a dent <laughs> in the floor. <laughs> dent in the floor. Oh, like, yeah, that was that was horrible to watch. It was. I've, I've seen uh, MMA Guru's reaction to it, and his, his reaction was quite similar to mine, but it's gone around a little bit in, in the MS, MMA sphere. It's just him screaming, stop the fight, mm. stop the fight. And that was everyone, right? Yeah. The, the commentary team. Yeah, they were they were just saying, "What more do you need to see?" I think um, MMA Guru, I have a video idea for you. Um, Listen up. Uh, now you need to to pull up what this ref's wife um, <laughs> I've yeah. been up to, and she just drag him into the ground. Yeah, yeah. she wrote what the book? book on late stoppages. <laughs> she wrote the book on late stoppages. <laughs> Uh, he's just whipped. Yeah, he's <laughs> whipped. She's trying to get him to stop to to stop these fights late. And he did. And he did. And he did his wife And proud. you need to talk about it, MMA Guru, because we can't. We, we can't. Yeah, we can't. We're not. We're not equipped with the, we're the not. audience. <laughs> not, not quite yet. But you could give us the audience by just shout us out or something. It's we'll come bit, on the show. It's a bit desperate, man. It is a bit desperate. I take it back. I don't want you to talk about us. No, I do, but in a more subtle way. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Um... But yeah, it was oh, that was horrible. You're, Honestly, you're horrible. Don't talk with your mouth full, mate. <laughs> right? No, it was it referencing. Was, yeah, I know what you were talking. Yeah. About. Now stop it. Um. Yeah. You seen that video of Tito Ortiz screwing on a lid, but he like screws it on like. No. <laughs> he's like holding this protein bottle and he's like screwing it on like that. But it's efficient. It actually works well. And he doesn't have to like twist it. <laughs> I don't it right want now. to see this. It's funny. Don't make me so uncomfortable. I'm going to find it. You find it now and I'll start talking about... Uh, weather report. No, I think... Okay, the weather report today, it's been very crap. We are... Been awful, eh? We're four days into summer here in Christchurch, New Zealand. And so far, it's raining. True, yeah. It's yeah, raining. It's... What's that about? I don't know. It's supposed to be the hot time. But it's now yeah, the wet time. And the thing is, it's not. <laughs> What's that about? It's not just raining. It's raining and cold. Yeah, it's like, not even warm. I know we're both wearing t-shirts, but we just do that to keep to keep up the appearance of always wearing t-shirts. Well, we just, just do that because because we're it looks clean. we're pretty cool, and we want you to be cool too. You know, does that make sense? Always. You know, you're struggling with this video. I'm struggling to find it. I really want to find it. Um, Tito Ortiz screws on lid. And pe- people listening wow. on Spotify, I'm trying to find a, a video of... What do you mean people listening on Spotify? This, is, this, isn't, this hasn't, hasn't been a visual thing at all so far. It hasn't. It's for <laughs> yeah, people right. everywhere. I, I, so I found the video on, um, on MMA Guru's channel. I was watching some of, his, some of his videos, and he did a video reacting to Tito Ortiz's just random Tito Ortiz-ness. Okay. Um, and he included this one clip of Tito Ortiz. We're kind of going on a tangent here. But yeah. he included this one. I think one- this is a desperate. Here it is. Here it is. Um, see if we can find it, eh? Fantastic. Um, it, there's a video of Tito Ortiz and he like makes this protein shake and he like screws the lid back on in a very funny way. And <laughs> look, I just want, oh, look at, look at these like, Perfect little clippings that he does. Yeah, nice. Let's go away. We need to maybe... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are, guys. Finally, the moment of truth. MMA Guru's video about Tito Ortiz. Uh, for people who are listening at home, I really feel sorry for you. Um, Here we are. Look at that. Okay, it's on the bench, though. It's on the bench. I know, but it's still funny. It's not as funny now as when I first saw it. No. And look at look hey look he's cracking up. Yeah, he's cracking up. He's having a great time. Um that's fantastic. I'm um, glad we spent a good 2 minutes uh making sure we got that. Yeah. Well, it's fair, um, you know. Like Naruto. Um mm. should we move on to the next fight? Oh, we- as long as you're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm always ready. I'm uh, going to let you announce it cuz you always make fun of how I say his name. Davidson Figueredo. Versus Rob Font. You said Davidson. Davison. Okay. 
Um, David. We we thought this had potential to be Fight of the Night, and was it your Fight of the Night? It got one of the Fight of the Night awards, I think. Yeah, I think it, they got, Figgy definitely got a Performance of the Night bonus. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Fight of the Night, but it it was it was up there, that's for sure. Mm. It was a great fight. It was a, yeah, Figgy really proved that he has the power at 135. Yeah. His Agreed. power kept. There was a, a few moments where you you thought that maybe um he was going to get a finish. Look back in. Um, it just looked laggy. Uh, yeah. Well, oh, right. There was uh, like Rob Rob Font had had some some moments, but they were always on the on the back of Biggie going in and landing a combination. Yeah, and yeah. it was only on the way out that Rob could catch him. Um, yeah. it happened a couple of times, but that seemed to be. That seemed to be his highlight of the fight. Um, few counters here and there. Yeah, a few counters. Mm. Only catching him on the way out. And yeah, Figgy just kind of walked around him the whole time, running circles around him and, and piecing him up. It was a very impressive uh, impressive. Yeah, move up to bantamweight for him. He looks like he belongs there. Um, and now like seeing him up there against Rob Font, like he didn't look quite as big as Rob, but he didn't look small. No, that's for sure. And it's, like I said, again, his strength and power really showed. Um, so yeah, this seems like the right weight class for him, especially going forward. You know, he obviously won the belt at one twenty-five. Now he's he's looking to win a belt at one thirty-five, and I think he's got serious title like contention hopes. Yep, a few more wins, and he could be looking straight down the barrel of uh, Sean O'Malley. Mm. Yeah, who do we want to see him fight next? Jody Young. Yeah, it's pretty simple, isn't can it? We? Can pretty, we? It's pretty simple. Can we see him? Can we, can we see him fight Piotr Jan, please? Please. Dana, please. Daddy Dana. Dana. We've called on you a couple times. and you Calling always, on you again. You always come to fruition. Um, yeah, please, MMA gods, can we please have Davidson Figueredo versus Piotr Jan? That is a dream fight. That'd be great. That would be great. Please. Um, please. Yeah. Please. No, I think the, the way that the styles clash in that fight will be so impressive. They are both just... So polished, yeah. Um, clean in so many areas. I mean, wrong. Yoda has powerful, just one of I think one of the cleanest Muay Thai styles in in the UFC yep. at the moment. Um, his Muay Thai his, and boxing. Fazeev, I, I I like I like watching Fazeev maybe a little bit more, but I think Yoda Yarn's polished. His technical ability is yeah. And yeah, yeah, I'd say they're both pretty comparable up there for the two mm. best, like just straight out Muay Thai boxing yeah. styles. Yeah, but Piotr Jan versus Figgy is oh. it's a fight and a half. That's for sure. It, it's um, that's the one we we need to see. We're making so many fight night headliners over here. Yeah, that yeah yeah, and that is a fight night headliner. That's got a headline fight night because there's so many of these fights that we that we make up and, and but they just have to be five rounds yeah. because there's so many questions that need to be answered yeah exactly because it's it's more about title contention and we need to see we need we now need to see figure at 135 fight five rounds yeah um just to see how he holds up and against someone like um i like think he's, he's Yan, it's going to be a big challenge i think he's going to hold out uh hold up incredibly yeah like no so do i the we need to see it we need to see it happen like the fact that he held out five rounds at flyweight when he was having to cut all that all that weight and then rehydrate in in those twenty four hours that that can't be easy on on your cardio. No, yeah, the fact no, that he doesn't not. have to do that at bantamweight and and he could go yeah like we say into a five round fight soon. Oh man, that is dangerous for whoever he's standing against the octagon from. Oh uh, yeah, that's <clears> no, you're I'm right, I, and I fully agree. Um, I think it's gonna be. It's yeah. There's a lot of fun fights ahead for for Figgy, and it's got to start with him. And like you say, he's no longer cutting that weight, so his cardio should be better. That that was one of his issues at 125 against the likes of um, Moreno. Uh, mm. He did gas a little bit in some of those fights, yeah. and that's not good in a no, fight. No, it's not. It's not. not it's good. Not, you know, it's not what you want to do. Biggie, uh, don't be gassing. <laughs> Cut it out, mate. Stop. Um, Rob Font. Who does he? Who does he want to fight next? Uh, let's have a check of of the rankings, which mm. will obviously be changing at some point. Uh, let's show the screen, eh? Um, so we've got. So obviously, yeah. So Rob Font sitting in there, there at, at number eight. Mm. Um, Dominic Cruz versus Rob Font would be a, a fun fight uh, if Dom is still interested in fighting. 
Yeah. Pedro Munoz as well. Oh, I think he'd piece him up. Yeah, same. But M- Munoz would, would piece up Rob Font. You think so? Yeah. Well, just just on current form at the moment. Well. Munoz has, has been looking good. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. Okay. Book it. See what happens. Know. Yeah. I'll check my verdict. Uh, MMA picked up. <laughs> right. I don't want to talk about that. Bloody verdict, MMA. How'd you go over the Stupid weekend? website. <laughs> oh. Stupid website. Betting is for lame people. You should just watch and enjoy. Don't don't make picks. God, mate. No, I didn't. I didn't There'd be some purists well. out there that would have lost thousands of dollars on this card over the weekend that will be listening to you after you've put some XP down <laughs> and and maybe you know oh maybe I'll get a maybe I'll get a stripe on my purple belt. Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Next week. Look. Next week oh, is going to be my week. Yeah. Next week's going to be my week. Did I still beat you? Boy's gone. Yeah, it would have fallen off when the shelf the came earthquake. down. <laughs> the earthquake. Uh, you did beat me. Um, Riley won though. Riley, Riley absolutely. Shout out smashed. Riley. Shout out to Riley J. His so Riley's never not too into the UFC or MMA in general. Like he's getting he's, into it. Yeah, he's been he's been making an effort, mm, and he's um, a smart guy. He made some good picks last weekend, and he ended up with eight thousand XP. Yeah, um, <laughs> mostly off of one fight. Yeah, but uh, no, most seems of like that beginner's well. luck is is a, yeah. is a hell of a thing. Yeah, don't I've picked like twenty cards now, and my luck's just terrible. Mm. So I need to start again. Basically, no. But shout out to Riley and, and congratulations, you did win. Yeah. Did win. Good grip, wasn't like Bruise on my hand. It was a good but, yeah, it was a good grip. Um, <clears throat> but the big question on everyone's mind is, I don't know. What is it? <laughs> that was what, enticing. What it um, but no, I think that's you, you... enough said about about those two. Let's put yeah, Munoz versus Font, Biggie versus um, Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan is you know he's looking to get back into that part of contention. Probably yep. I don't really know. I don't talk to him often, but no. Last time I spoke to him, he was saying something about it was belt. Yeah. yeah, about belt. Yeah, about belt. a belt. Is he a scouser? <laughs> no, <laughs> belt. Give me belt. <laughs> Belt. Be belt. Belt. Uh, quickly, let's run over. <laughs> yeah, we did actually, can we just talk about belt. That, um, that scream that Piotr Jan did on the- <laughs> yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to, you need to look that up because it, does, it makes him not look as scary as he definitely is. He him look like a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was so- yeah, check out. Oh, There's I also one from that. Mike Perry as well. Yeah. He does a similar one. I love Mike Perry. We're going to yeah. have to talk oh, about yeah. him. Yeah, we will. We will. Um, before we get into the next one, I'm going to take a short intermission. I need, a, I need to do a, a thing. I'm going to take a sh- <laughs> so, short intermission. Everyone, <laughs> everyone will be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Sweet. So we just want to say a big thank you to all of those companies for helping us out <laughs> so far. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. And... We'll get back into it, I guess. Yeah, they um, it. So, Sean Brady was the next fight. Sugar Sean. Um, well, no, not Sugar <coughs> Sean. Not Sugar Sean. Um, Sean the bad man. What was his... I wonder what his nickname is. I can't remember now. Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer? Yeah. Some of those, I don't know. Probably not. Um, what an impressive victory. Yeah, that was super um, impressive. This is where I, I stacked my... Well, this is where I got my stack of uh, XP on Verdict MMA. Um, you put through a third round submission, didn't I you? I did. Yeah. Uh, for Sean Brady and he nearly got him late in the second and I, I was like I was watching it yeah I was like surely not um but yeah he, he Kelvin held on to the third um which may as well not have but he did nonetheless that was a um, real rough looking submission as well that Kimura oh was, yeah he had tough. that arm cranked I thought he wasn't going to tap I thought we were going to see an arm snap in the octagon yeah I did too yeah I, I was scared <clears throat> Uh, for a second, I did not want to. I didn't want to look away, but at the same time, yeah. I had a feeling I didn't want to watch. Yeah, same, same. But honestly, Sean Brady just ha- manhandled him the whole time. He handled him like a man. Yeah, he did. He, there was no doubt. He seemed I think, way for, stronger. Yeah, like way stronger. Because obviously, we know um, and we've seen before in the past. Gastelum is a very good wrestler, and and he's, you know, he's he's well versed in the grappling department. But he got manhandled. Yeah, big time by the guy. He did look a lot bigger, to be fair, Sean Brady, which makes it insane that Gaston used to be at middleweight. Like, he's obviously a welterweight. Yeah, welterweight. 
He no, you're right. <laughs> he he is a, a a welterweight. I almost said welterweight then. Um, he is definitely a welterweight. Yeah, like yeah. Sean. Sean just lent on him for for the first two rounds, pretty much. Just put his weight on right him. on top of of Kelvin, mm. and that third round he kind of came out and he was done for. Yeah. Um. Even late in the second, even midway through the second, Kelvin yeah. was done for. Yeah. And it was just. He wasn't was, having a good time in there. It wasn't an no. even back and forth. It was. It was. It was utter domination. Utter domination by Sean Brady, who should be shooting. Right back into that, into the mix uh, for yeah. for someone, someone in the top five again. I'd say yeah, top five or top ten, um, at least top ten, um, for sure. Do we ever we we peek into that division and and just see who 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 he should be fighting next? Yeah, um, I don't think Jeff Neal. Let's booked. do that. Jeff Neal would be a good one. Uh, Gilbert Burns, even. You want to chuck him even higher? I like Gilbert. I, I like that fight. Gilbert, Gilbert Burns. Yeah, Gilbert Burns is probably that's probably the next logical step, right? Yeah, like to get him right back in there, Gilbert's would be a very tough test. His grappling would, obviously, Gilbert is known for his jiu-jitsu. Yep. So his grappling that that would be really put to the test against a guy like Gilbert. A hundred percent. More natural uh, in the weight class. He's more used to being at this weight class, and yeah, that would be a, a really good test for Sean. Yeah, I think it would be. Um, and the other thing too is Gilbert isn't. Like I know he's he's a bit older, um, but he is he's still ranked number four. Yeah. Um, and he's he's hungry. He is. Um, he, he is, is coming off a loss to Bilal. Yeah. Um, but before that, we'd seen some really solid performances from him. Um, in the likes of that fight against Mars Vidal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> utter domination. And, and then he he did kind of turn around a little bit too quickly for that fight as yep. well. So. No, that's right. But at the same time, what I'm getting to is, is he wants to go out there and prove that he is still, he he still deserves to be right at the top of the yep. of the division, and I believe he does. Yeah, he is a great fighter with a, a really complete skill set, and we like you say, he's he's so well versed on the ground. But yet we've seen his striking, um, his striking has just improved so much in the last few years. Uh, he knocked down Kamaru Usman, um, almost had him out. Mm. Uh, he had that absolute log fest with Hamzat Shemaev. Yep. Um so yeah, Sean Sean Brady versus Gilbert Burns. It's a dangerous that's, I think that's a dangerous the fight. fight. To make. <clears throat> it is. Chuck it on like a pay per view early in the year, maybe one of those first three pay per views of the year or something. Chuck it on the uh, on the on the main card. Yep. Like maybe like a third from the top of one of those. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. It's a nice little banger in the making there. It's a nice little banger. And yeah. what's next for Kelvin? I think we've both kind of came to the conclusion we don't like recommending that people retire. So we won't. But what is next for him? But we just won't recommend who he should fight. Yeah, next. let's see. <laughs> next up for... We're um, not going to recommend... Uh, yeah, don't, don't, ret- don't retire. Just don't, don't retire, fight anyone. But yeah, we just won't say who you should fight next. Because yeah. we know that all, all the fighters are listening to this going, God, who am I fighting next? And then they come to the combat corner and they listen to it. They're like, oh no, like Sean Brady's it's there right now fight. shaking in his little yeah, boots about this Gilbert got Burns to fight. fight. Gilbert now. Oh... I mean, if, if he was to fight someone, it would have to be a Neil Magny and Michael Chiesa. I think he's already fought Neil Magny and he beat him. Uh, a Kevin Holland, even. Like, someone lower in the top 15, mm. I think. Maybe, yeah, maybe a Kevin Holland or a, a Neil Magny or a Michael Chiesa. I don't Kevin fancy Holland, him against Kevin either. Holland's uh, rumoured right. to be booked, mate. He is rumoured to be booked. Rumoured, but no confirmation yet. No. And Kevin Holland did post comment on one of our posts. Just a shout out there to Kevin. Thanks, Kev. He needs all the all the notes, you know. Um, so cheers, Kev. You really did us a solid there. Um, glad to know you're watching. Probably watching right now. Definitely is. Yeah, big fan, I'm pretty sure. Like if he's commenting on one of our posts with one word, he's probably watching all our content. Yeah, that's so. that's how it works. It is how it works. I, I normally don't comment on people's stuff um, until I've watched every single one of their videos. Yeah. And we don't have that many, so it's probably, you know, he probably did a bit of a binge. And yeah. He's like, oh, these guys are great. I'm going to tell all my fighter friends about And that's why all the fighters watch us, basically. Yeah. That's why we've had so many people hitting us up asking to do interviews and, and yes. stuff. Yes, oh, so many. We just can't be bothered getting a third mic. Not really, yeah. Not a third big mic. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Gaslam versus Kevin Holland, if he, if he does decide to fight again in the future. I don't know how old he is. I think he's about 33, 34. Old enough. He's old enough to fight. He's probably old enough to drink and gamble responsibly. And re- um, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> In um, 
So yeah, big big Henry Cejudo. We want you to just take some time, figure out what you want, because that was tough. Like you, you didn't you didn't get much going, and we all love Kelvin Gastelum, like we do. It took me a while to click what you meant when you said big Henry Cejudo, and then yeah, <laughs> I put it together. Yeah, that's he does look Literally, like big Henry. He's Cejudo. like a big Henry Cejudo. It's kind of strange, and I think they're friends as well. Um, so that's even weirder. Maybe they are the same person. Uh, another thing to, of note, obviously, Quay, Clay Guida was uh, a fighter on that card, and he fought, and he did lose, but he was pretty impressive in, in the loss. Joaquim Silva was his opponent. Yeah, Joaquim who, Silva. Who won, who we probably should mention as well, probably should. due to the probably fact should. that he, he won. He did. Um, Clay Guida had a, a pretty average first round. Yeah. He, he took a lot of damage, but he kind of he dominated the wrestling. Um, yeah, he did and really then well. second round he did very well on his on in the time that he was on his feet. He did kind of make some adjustments and managed to stay out of uh, Silver's range a little bit more, and again dominated the wrestling. He's got um, a hell of a chin on him as well. Oh, like I, that's. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone needed any confirmation of that. No, um, he's no, been no, no. he's been doing this for so long now, and he does it the same way every single yeah. time. That third round though, I was it, it was looking it was looking like the the. The tide had, had, had turned and, and Clay had kind of started taking the reins of the fight, but Silver came out, he'd made the adjustments, he he, he kind he of just simplified the, the game plan, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. and, and just really focused on getting as many shots off as he could and just slightly outstriked Clay for that third round, managed to keep the wrestling down a little bit, I guess, on, on, on Clay's side um, and held on till the end. Yeah, and he he deserved to win. No, hmm. I think we were yeah we because we we kind of we were chatting and we were like oh Clay's probably got got this, but then yeah by the end of the third round it was pretty obvious unanimous decision uh twenty nine twenty eight pretty close but an obvious winner yeah and the right person got picked at the end of the day yeah. which is always good. Um, <clears throat> Clay forty one years old though that's so impressive that he can go out and fight like that against a younger guy with more power yeah. not get finished way more power <laughs> yeah like way more power say so, like yeah. Clay's punches, this is one thing I did notice, he didn't look to have much sting on his punches whatsoever. Mm. Like, he landed some pretty big shots, and it was just, like, not much happened, you know? Yeah. It looks like he carries a lot of his weight in his back. <laughs> yeah. Um, in his forehead. Yeah, he's got... Yeah, probably his forehead. There's the very dense bones in his, in his yeah. skull. He's a very dense um, guy. No, not... God, like, man. He, <laughs> but, yeah, he... Dense. I I I'd, I'd just keep booking him. Just keep booking him, yeah. please. Against anyone, maybe not anyone within the top fifteen, but if he wants to keep fighting, or like, it's not like one of those guys where you're like, oh god, come on, man, just call it a day. Just call it a day. It'll be best for you. Yeah, and it'll be best for all your fans if you just call it a day. You've you've had a great career. No, he's continuing to put on great performances. Yeah, and it's pretty cool to to see that. That was my fight of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was pretty shot. exciting. Pretty pretty damn. It was exciting. just the whole time I was just. On the edge of my seat, just couldn't believe what I was what I was seeing for some some of those moments. Yeah, yeah, some of those those exchanges up against the fence were just so crazy. Yeah, and when he like when you Silver would be kind of like teeing off, and you're like, oh shit, what's happening? And then he just turn the tide somehow with a takedown, yeah. or either or maybe reverse position, and then yeah. he would land something, and you're like, oh, yeah. the commentators were loving it. Yeah, oh, what a crazy. Fight. What a forty fight. one year old putting on those kind of bangers like that is just awesome. Forty two in a week. Forty two in a week. It's Happy Clay. birthday, Clay! It's crazy, or man. When your birthday is? I wonder when he'll retire. Imagine that he gets to like forty-five. And he's still going. That would be quite crazy. Um, but yeah, no, nah, awesome. Um, there was also two slam knockouts on the prelims. Did you watch those? I did. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. So, uh, so did I. I, I, I must admit, I. You would have been in, uh, in the hospital for some of it, wouldn't you? No, I, I didn't go to the hospital. You didn't go in the end? No, no. Huh. I don't need hospitals for me. I'm a tough guy. I'm a tough guy. I'm not really. But <clears throat> I just don't like going to the hospital unless I really need to. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Do you know it's what just... I mean, though? Like, it's like, I'll do anything to not go to the hospital, even if it's the smart thing to do. I'll just do anything to not. Unless I, like, really... Unless it becomes really obvious, like, okay, shit. Like, yeah. Which is probably not a smart way to live your life. Probably not. But... We all make decisions on our Man. own. Men. I'm a man. I don't need help. But yeah, two slam knockouts. Two slam knockouts. What I was going to say was, yeah, the two slams happened and then I passed out for like an hour. You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching in bed 
I was just watching on my iPad and I just woke up and I was like, my stream had like died and I was just like, what's going on? And then I just turned it back on and it, I think we were like, it was like one fight in. Yeah. Or well, the first fight had just started on the main card. God, yeah, I I was I was half asleep for the first couple fights on the prelims and then I thought to myself, all right, I might have a nap here for about an hour until the main card. Yeah. And then um, the John Anik announced the next fight and he's like, this is one that Dana said is his fight to watch. And then I'm like, Oh God, now I've got to watch this. There's one more. And yeah, it just, yeah. Get, and then I realized that they say something like that about every single fight. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, I've just been, I've been worked. Yeah, I've been, they've, they've done a number on me here. Been Ian now I haven't napped. Yeah. Um, yeah. And next thing I knew I was marrying a 40 year old who was going to take all my podcast money away from me. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, right. the two, two slams. Yeah, were, two slams. They were. That was. You were dumb. saying before this that there has been an average normally about of about one a year. There haven't yeah. hasn't been one for the last two years. Then we have two on the same card, but not just on the same card. One, one fight after, after the another. Other. Yeah, super like violent ones as well. They Including like these two that ones. just happened. There have been fourteen of these in the history of the UFC. Yeah, what fourteen slams? Yeah, was it? Yeah. Fourteen slam knockouts. Yeah, so yeah, and basically, That's basically one a year, many. not many at all. And the way that, like, because as the commentators were saying, they they both landed on the side of their head, yeah, the guys. And I, I think the other one, not not Anik or um, Felder, but the other guy was, oh, was it Bisping? Was it Anik and Bisping? Uh, was it DC was there? I think DC wasn't and Bisping. DC Anik Bisping. wasn't there. Who else was there? Was that other guy that replaces Anik for the fight nights? Oh, uh, yeah. We don't Can't remember his name, that, yeah. but he's he's all right. He's good at his job. But uh, you're all right, mate. <laughs> yeah, you're all right. You're all right, John Anik too. But um, <clears throat> yeah, John Anik too was saying something like <laughs> he said like this is going to be the new thing. This is going to be the new like Conor McGregor's elbows in the clinch. Remember how he did that, and then everyone started doing that. Right. You mean his shoulders <laughs> in the clinch? Yeah, shoulders in the clinch. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> I think uh, Bisping was like, "Ah, oh, come on, mate. What are you talking about, <laughs> dickhead?" Um, but no, honestly, we could see more of that happening. Pick up, slam on the side of the head. Like, Do you think the guy in the second fight, right? The, sec- the the one who did the second slam. Close, I think. Um, do you think he he watched the fight beforehand? Because a lot of the time, yeah, I think he did. They say he that they, sure, yeah, I don't know, but he would have been warming up and like, is he watching the fight before? Did he even know that that had happened just yeah, before his fight? It'd be interesting to like talk to him. And, and like, if there was an interview of him afterwards, I bet someone asked. Yeah, it's a good point. I should probably do some journalism. <laughs> Go and have a look. Sorry, guys, that's bad on my part. <laughs> it is pretty bad on Jackson's part. Why don't you go look yourself? Yeah, honestly, so lazy, viewers. <clears throat> Talking about you, Riley Johnstone. Look off this right now. Get off this video right now and go answer the questions yourself. Yeah. And then tell us, because <laughs> that would really help. Leave a comment down We need, like, below. a journalism guy who does, like, all the stuff that we should be doing, yeah. that, but we don't. Who writes the notes? Oh, that's me. Well, maybe I should do it then. <laughs> um, anyway. Dana's been rumoring yeah, something. crazy. Dana has been talking about a big super fight that's upcoming. Uh, he mentioned this first on the Nelk Boys podcast last week. <clears throat> and I think ever since then, everyone in the MMA community has just been like pretending that they know what it is. Mm. I don't think anyone actually knows. <laughs> what does it even mean? I don't know. Apparently it's a super fight that doesn't include Connor. Because that's what they said. They were like, is there anything happening potentially? Because obviously Connor fights, it's always going to be a super fight. Was it, is it rumored for 300? Or no, is it just rumored for next year? Just at some point they're trying to make it. It's not oh. confirmed, but apparently they're trying to make this super fight that, they, that might happen next year. It's just Dana being Dana, isn't it? He always says random shit. He's probably got this little idea on the back of his head. I think it's maybe a BMF fight between Gaethje and, and Holloway because it has been talked about. A few other people have mentioned it. That is like a super us. fight. We did. We were the first. We were. <clears throat> and then a couple of people kind of went on after that. But okay, that I guess because <laughs> super fight, you've either got to have some massive name or names coming or two back. Two titles. Two title holders. Coming back, you've got to have, yeah, one guy moving up a weight division to fight for another title. So, uh, yeah, it would have to be a champ. Or uh, does a does a, a number one ranked featherweight moving up 
to lightweight to fight for a gimmick title count as a super fight? Yeah, I think it does. Uh, there's a, like I think it, it's usually star power, right? And Gaethje versus Holloway, oh, it's a lot of star yeah. power. Don't get me, don't don't take, don't put those words in my mouth. I'm not saying that they are they are big stars, but there's no there's no real title on the line. There's no one coming back that we haven't seen for 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 a wee while. I think it's the intrigue, though. You know, mm. you know, there's a lot of intrigue. There, I mean, there could be. There's a few other fights that it could be. Um, I've heard Ronda Rousey's name being chucked around, but Is I really she, don't yeah, think that's, that's going to happen. But it could be Ronda Rousey okay. versus Holly Holm too, yeah. or some shit. Okay, that's true because we do need that would be for the bent the, the vacant bent one, yeah. Because yeah, oh, yeah. they are fighting. That's already been fought for though. Oh, has it? It is a woman's BMF. A woman's BMF. Yeah, it still works. <laughs> <laughs> Bad, um, BFF? Baddest, baddest father fucker? Baddest motherfucker? I think we just, yeah, we just keep it as BMF. BMF. Just leave we it. don't have to... BW. Get dicey with who they're fucking. Baddest woman. <laughs> BW. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> B, well, just BW. BW? Bad woman. Bad woman. <laughs> Bad woman. bad woman belt. What's on the line today? The bad woman belt. Uh, yeah, book it. <laughs> book it now. Um, uh, I saw a rumor that it could be GSP coming back and fighting Nick, uh, Nick Diaz. But yeah, I think uh, you're, what you said is more likely to happen. They are more likely to have one of those grappling matches. Yeah, I think so, right? Like, <clears throat> just doesn't make sense for them to come back now. Way if out of their GSP prime. is going to come back and fight anyone though, after watching Nick's last performance against Robbie Lawler, I I was sitting there thinking like, oh. anyone <laughs> maybe, can maybe I could guy. jump in the UFC. Yeah, like, no, no, uh, no. But like, you know what I'm saying? I think Nick came into that fight really unprepared, which was odd because we it saw pictures odd. of him and he was looking like ripped and like he was looking prepared. Oh, but... no, I don't think we saw any ripped photos of him in the build up to that fight, but mm, like semi recent to that fight. He looked though, like Ben Askren. He did. Walking in there. He looked slow. He looked labored. He looked like he could not be bothered yeah. at all. And it looked like he was there for a paycheck, which he probably was. And there was rumors of him fighting Masvidal like three years before that. Imagine if yeah. that happened. That would have been great. Um, but he's he keeps talking. I follow his Instagram. He keeps talking about coming Better back. Return, yeah. Um. He keeps tagging Dana and everything, and like, keeps talking about coming back. So, GSP's been a bit uh, active on Instagram as well. I've I've noticed if we have we look at um at, at his um his gram. His gram. Do you reckon there's anything on here that that like hints at a return? Um, because it's, they usually hint at it, right? Like, so he did post this, which is obviously picture of him fighting um when i was in my prime he was, ready, was for in my war. Prime, ready for war <laughs> look at this guy gsp come back and fight the winner of leon versus colby <laughs> uh, that's that's some chat that is a sick photo though that is a great photo awesome uh there's also a picture of him eating some ice cream Talking about his water fast. i had someone saying uh i saw it on online that first photo that we were looking at Saying that that is like one of the the baddest photos in MMA, but I just I don't agree. Pretty cool. Well, I, at, I, I agree. It's probably the baddest photo of GSP um, in his MMA career. But there's a lot scarier guys. Like I, d- I just look at the coaches there. Um, hmm. He's obviously got Greg Jackson, um, got Faraza Harvey. <clears throat> um, what's his name? Who's the guy on the right? I think that's the boxing coach. <sighs> What's he called? Can't remember. And he's obviously got John Danaher on the left with hair. And <laughs> and he's not wearing a rash. Oh, no, he is wearing a rash guard. Of course he is. Um, I think that's why people think it's so dope. Because the coaches, right. the lineup of coaches there are like, that's like four of the best. Yeah, I don't even ever. know that. Oh. Yeah, there you go. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm man enough to admit it too. It's okay. The guy on the left, John Danaher, is a crazy motherfucker. He's from New Zealand, actually. Oh. Yeah, he's he's one of the best uh, grappling coaches ever. He coaches Gordon Ryan. All oh, right. Oh, okay. That's a name I know. That's a name um, that you know. 
big big grappling man. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we've we've discussed who we think this super fight could be. Yeah, with relative incoherence as usual. Mm. <laughs> right? That's us. That's pretty much it. that's that's who we are, and we're not going to change. Yeah. Not for anyone. Relatively incoherent. Relatively incoherent, but re- like relatively okay as well. Mm. Um, um, Mike Perry versus Eddie Alvarez. You watched that live, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Did you? I watched it on my lunch break today because oh, yeah. I did want to talk about it. Good fight. Great fight. Um, Banger. It is seeming to be, I heard something that Mike Perry said after the fight, um, which is actually what reminded me to watch it in the first place because I didn't really know that it was taking place on the same day. But anyway, again, just my terrible research. The marketing wasn't great. It, well, there was some, better than like most boxing fights, but the marketing wasn't great. So maybe it just didn't reach you. Um, Either way. Um, yeah, Mike Perry didn't look like if if, if that was going to continue on for another three rounds, that was looking like a pretty close fight. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, honestly. The, oh, yeah, what I was saying, yeah. So I heard him saying after that fight, he wants to find someone who matches his energy because there's been so many guys now that go in there and they d- go a couple rounds or they go a round, they get hit in the face without any gloves on and they go, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm getting out of here. Uh, mm-hmm. like, and and he's the only guy who who has gone in there time and time again and at the top level of 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 it. Yeah, man, like, and I'd love to see that too. Someone who go in there again and and get a a good five rounds out of him. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. I think he needs to fight someone who's like actually experienced in bare knuckle. Yeah, like obviously, um, Alvarez had that fight against Chad Mendes in bare knuckle, and mm-hmm. he won that fight. And that was close. Um. Which that's is a, interesting. That's a good point. He did he did have a five round war with Mendes and yeah. he won that. But um obviously Luke Rockhold had never stepped in the ring before as a bare knuckle fighter and that he was, was a just paycheck. like yeah, he was just like, screw this shit. My tooth has been knocked out already. Yeah. I'm not taking any more of that crap. Which is fair enough. Yeah. Honestly. Especially when you're that pretty looking. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. He doesn't need to get fight. More teeth knocked why out. why would someone like Luke Rockhold need to fight? Yeah. He's not the smartest. Is he? No, you said it. Hey? You said it. I said he was I didn't pretty. You said he you wasn't said the that. smartest. I don't know what I said and what you didn't say. I it's not, being recorded, so it's we not can a check. very smart thing of you to say. It isn't. Um, but no, I'm all compliments yeah. here, Luke. Love you, Luke. Rockhold. You're a great guy. Yeah, you want to watch this guy. Um, okay, so yeah, he he had that fight against Luke Rockhold, which he won uh, by a first round stoppage. Uh, before that, it was MVP. Uh, before that, it was Michael Venom Page. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, which I think may have gone the distance. It did. Uh, it went to a, a sudden death decision fight, and Perry won that final round. Right. It was like a draw, and yeah, it went to a sudden death round, which is crazy. That's cool. Before that. Before that, it was Justin Lanes, I think. That's right. Yeah, it was. I think so, yeah. <clears throat> and he won. Um, I, I agree with you. It's it's hard to market, though, I think, putting him up against a, a beer knuckle guy because no one really knows who they are. Yeah. Um, But. Not I agree with you. No one's gonna, no one's gonna go in there and, and out scrap him until he get, yeah gets in there with an experienced uh, guy who's yeah. not been wearing gloves his whole career. Exactly because it's a different game, and everyone who goes in there and says it, it is a completely different game when you jump in there. It's like it's not what you, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. No, like you it get out, and all your teeth are rattling. Yeah, exactly. Like <clears throat> you take hard knuckles to the face. Like yeah, yeah the, the gloves in MMA aren't that big. But at least it's something. Like yeah. There's a bit of padding there that's going to, you know, stop your face that's from getting four mangled. ounces yeah. less. Like four ounces is, is a lot when a lot of when protection compared, it's compared to nothing. To nothing. Yeah. yeah, and your hands get all busted up as well. And like Eddie said, like Eddie's face was blown up to, oh, to shreds. Terrible man. But he was winning the fight, in he my was. opinion. He yeah. won the first round definitely. The second round was closer, but I still think he was winning. Mm. Um, and and they and threw he just in the towel. Obviously, about not being able to see. Tough. I think yeah, they just get in there and they're just like, "This is a different ball game, and I don't want to put any part of it yeah. right now." And fair enough, I'd probably do the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, um, but yeah, all, all congrats to Mike Perry. He's an absolute G, and he's bossing it over there in in um, bare knuckle. I love Mike Perry. Ek, bro. yeah, he's funny. That's my, um, that's my guy. My shit. That's my. That's that's my. No, that's, leave it that's my just guy. Mike Perry, my guy. He's a he's uh, one third African. 
No, it's a 64th Nigerian. So he's a 64th Nigerian. I was, uh, I was, I was recently uh, told that it was Nigerian because for, for the majority of my life, my, my grandma told me it was Jamaican. But are you actually? Yeah. No, it's not I a know. lie. I, I, I was told like for that. the majority of my life that I was a 64th Jamaican until my nana did a DNA test to find out. out. She is uh, actually part of Nigeria. <laughs> rather than, rather than uh, yeah, Jamaican. So that was an interesting development in my life. Um, so don't, but still, but maybe yeah. just. I think my percentage might be higher than Mike's. Potentially. Potentially. Anyway. <clears throat> but I'm I mean, not going to go, you know. Yeah. I'm not going to go say anything. <laughs> don't push your luck. No. Nah. No. Nah. Um, I tell you what, we've been we've been doing this for a while now. Under that, it says outro. Under what we were just talking about, it says outro. I said our next note. Yeah, outro. We're missing something in between that, though. We are. We've got the a all Lucas important LucasAid drink review. Kobe's favorite. Well, not favorite, but one of my favorite drinks from my childhood. Oh. Uh, I absolutely love this drink. Oh, Bob's. Very much. It means a lot to me. Yeah? Um, Why? Because I love it. It just like, takes me back. Okay. And I'm going to put it at number one, personally. I want you to put your two cents on that, because obviously that's how we do it. I, that's my favorite. Uh, that's better than Iron Brew for me, yeah. personally. And I'm I'm just going to say it. Like I, I, I agree. You know, no, I agree. Number one. Agree? It's better than Iron Brew, just because it kind of tastes quite similar to Iron Brew, except Ooh, Iron Brew yeah. is just... Iron Brew isn't trying to hide the fact that it's bad for you. That is all LucasAid is trying to do. LucasAid is, it's it's standing like at glucose. the door. It's on a particular angle to try and make itself look thinner. It's standing in good lighting and it's saying, "Hey, come over here. I am not that bad. I'm not all that bad." And then you turn it around, and it's got fifty three point six <laughs> grams of sugar and so many carbs. Like it's just, it's. It's not, not good. It's just not what it's made out to 66 be. 66 grams of carbs. That's 22% of your daily recommended yeah. carb intake in one bottle. I think the thing is, is if it was in a can and it was marketed like an energy drink like Monster or V or one of those, then it wouldn't be as deceiving. But I think it's like in one of these bottles, which is normally like this, like a, a fruity, more of like yeah. a healthier drink, but smart. Smart. Very smart, Lucas A. Smart people. But Lucas and of Aid, course, yeah, we'll put you to the top of the list, whatever. <clears throat> Lucas A goes in there. Uh, Wang Lao, forever dropping. Uh, we've got the Gong T is going to go down. I can't, couldn't remember the full proper name of, of um, Gong Cha. Yeah, I'm going to have to go down a little bit further with these. We ones. can sort this out after. We can. You we know, can. I think that would make a bit more sense. But it, we want to put the star on the reasonably, reasonably priced. Uh, you know what? We're going to fucking do it later. Right, mate. We're gonna fucking do it later, mate. Throw your toys. I don't have any toys, bro. Give you one. Here we go. Throw that. On that note, guys, Kobe's now throwing <coughs> the toys. Um, we've had uh, we've had a good discussion today. I think we have. We've we've broken down what these guys did on the weekend, where they're gonna go, who they're definitely gonna fight next, because they know. Uh, we'll sort that out for us. So what we'd like you guys to do in the meantime is just pop down below and maybe like the video, hit subscribe, come back and see us again when we upload our next episode this week. Because we do two of these every week, don't well. we? we? Yeah, we do. We Yeah. But yeah, ch check out the short content. Like if you Kobe like repurposed says. content, check that out. If you've already watched this, probably no point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, we'll see you Saturday. See you Saturday. Goodbye. Peace. Peace.